Hi, my name is Joa Arvo, and I'm doing interracial marriage in the U.S. and how it changed over time. What is interracial marriage? That is a question that everyone seemed to wonder. I know that's what I wondered back in the day, what is interracial marriage? And I'm glad I was able to do this topic and I found out more details than I actually knew. Interracial marriage in English is marriage that refers to the institution of marriage, which basically is marriages between two different individuals of race or ethnicity or, or culture, whichever one you prefer. For example, between black and white or Asians and black or white and Asians or different ethnicities and other religions. The history behind interracial marriage. Well, interracial marriage first happened first happened in Maryland, passed by the Maryland passed the first British col uh, colonial, col colonial law banning marriages between white and whites and slaves. A law that, among other things, orders the um, enslavement of white women who have been married to black men, and. In 16, um, 1691, is the Commonwealth of Virginia bans all interracial marriages, threatening to excel whites who marry, of you know, people of color, whether it be African American, whether it be whites, Asians, Native Americans, any of that. In the 17th century, in the 17th century, it excel usually functions as a death penalty. So anyone who married within within a different cultural or ethnicity, they would get the death penalty. So let's say a black person married a white person, a white person married an Asian person, or whatnot, they would get the death penalty, they would get hung for this. In, 19, in 1780, Pennsylvania, which had passed a law banning interracial marriages in, 19, uh, in 1725, which it was reappealed as part of a series of reform intended to gradually abolish slavery within the state and grant um, free blacks equal legal status. So which that basically means was how, be, you know, after there were slaves and stuff like that, after they had their rights to be freed and whatnot, they were given the rights to actually marry someone within a different country, which in 1871 is Republican Andrew King he proposes a U.S. Um, constitutional amendment banning all marriages. He did not approve, so he wanted it to be passed within each state in the United States. Each, yeah, each state in the United States. And it's, um, it was banning marriages between whites and people of color, whether, like I said, whether it be black, Asians, Native Americans, um, every state throughout the country. In 1922, Congress passed um, the Cable Act, which was basically um, stripping the rights of citizens of any U.S. Um, yeah, any U.S. citizen who married an alien, illegal, I mean, alien eligible for citizenship. Like let's say someone who was trying to get their citizenship or anything like that, he banned them from marrying for that spe uh, specific reason. Which um, under the racial plural system of the time, primarily meant Asian Americans or Native Americans and stuff. And interracial marriages was passed in the United States. It was fully legalized in all parts of the U.S. since 1967 by the Supreme Court. That allowed people the right to be able to marry within any race, whether it's black, white, Asians, um, African Americans, or Native Americans. That's when the law allowed them to actually marry within different ethnicity, different cultures. Or um, why, inter why is interracial marriages on the rise? Well, one reason is after the Loving versus Virginia verdict made interracial marriages ban illegal, ban illegal across the country. Um, ever since that ban was lifted off, it gave um, every, you know it gave other individuals, whether like I said, black, white, Native Americans, Asians, the right to have interracial marriages. And ever since it was legalized in the United States, it has come a long way. For example, in 2010, there were 1.8 percent of all new marriages were between either black and white, or other ethnicity or race, and um, nearly 20 times higher than in 1950. So before it was even passed, because most people, like I will um, discuss later on in this presentation, how people still 
went and, you know, got married, even though the law wasn't passed at that time, which is why I said he got higher than in 1950. In 2014, 85% of Americans between the age of 18 and 21, I mean 18 and 29, responded that they would accept a family member marrying a person of a different race or ethnicity compared to just 38% of those who were 65 or older. And um, first interracial marriages, when this happened was one couple on July 11th, 1958, a newlywed named Richard and Mildred Loving were um, asleep in bed. Three armed police officers burst into their hotel room, I believe, and um, halted, you know, it messed up their whole home and everything like that. And ended up arresting them and throwing them into jail. They didn't allow this. This was before the law got um, passed. It was three, four, five, six years before the law got passed because it got passed in 1967. So before it got passed, these couples were not allowed to get married or anything, but instead they didn't care. They fell in love and their family wasn't accepting it or whatnot, so they just ran off and ended up getting married. And um, they remained in jail for several days until, you know, because back in the day, there's, that was a crime. Marrying the opposite race was a crime. And if you committed that crime, you would either, like I said before, you get the death penalty or you would be sentenced to jail. And that's what they, this couple happened. They got sent to jail for several days. And after they got out, it was still hard for them to, you know, legally live in the same place and whatnot because of the whole marriage being banned and their families like I said didn't accept them their families said that they were going to kill them and all sorts of things and once the law got passed they didn't care they went to court and found ways to make sure that they were able to get married and they ended up getting married in 1713 Hong married a middle class Persian woman named Marie Claude Regina, I'm guessing I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, there were very few records of marriage between Europeans and non-Europeans. It wasn't people at all that would marry within, you know, other races. This is like I said. And um, during this time period, many consider such relationships unthinkable. They didn't even think that it's possible for, you know, couples from different ethnicity or, you know, either Native American, European or whatnot to be able to actually get married. They didn't think that was true. But this couple made it happen, even though, like I said, they went through a struggle. They, you know, were jailed and everything. They went through so much, but at the end of the day, they didn't let that stop them. They still managed to go through courts and stuff to be able to get married, and they ended up getting married. And the last couple is um, Louis Gregory, an African-American man, and Louisa Matthews, a British woman. And um, these two were from different religions. They weren't in the same religions. Um, they fell in love. They got married in 1912 in New York, becoming the first interracial Bahadi couple. Um, like I said, similar to the story before, um, that was impossible. They, you know, trying to marry someone within your, that's not within your religion, wasn't, you know, possible for them to do. And um, this is what I found out about the information, but in my history, I'm, uh, in my family, there have been a lot of interracial marriages. Um, I, have, I don't have it up here, but um, my cousin is married to um, uh, Eletranian, which is basically, um, in, they're in within Africa, but um, and she's Somalian. And I had people like my other family member, my aunt, who got married to um, a Pakistani. And my family is very diverse, so it's like many ethnicities, many different racial. And I love the interracial marriage period. I asked many people if they would consider, you know, having interracial marriages or anything like that. Most a few said yes, and then a few said they'd just rather keep it within their um race and whatnot, which I I don't blame them. I mean, interracial marriages are very difficult. It brings two different families together and, it, you know, culturalize and everything. And if they're different religions, it brings religion, you know, together. And um, you learn a whole lot of things with different ethnicities. Like, for example, um, with my, um, cousin, uh, my cousin's husband, we learn a lot because he's from 
Saudi Arabia. And um, like I said, he's Eritrean, so he was born in Saudi the whole time. I've learned so much from them just to see, like, you know, how marriages nowadays, you don't see a lot of people get married within different ethnicity or race. You only see them, you know, married within their race. So just to see that interracial marriages still exist is amazing. And um, it makes me happy to just to see other couples that are actually, you know, not only marrying within their race, but actually going and marrying without their race. And like I said, interracial marriages are still on the rise from this day. There are a lot of families, a lot of um, ethnic and cultures and religions that are come together as one. And they don't look at, you know, the whole gender, the whole, right, you know, they, they don't look at any of that. They basically, if you find love, it doesn't matter what background they come from or what religion or what race they come from, they accept that person for who they are and don't see color or anything like that as a um, difference. And there has been um, interracial marriages amongst um, um, amongst, you know, like two same genders and Same sex gender. There we go. There has been um, interracial marriages between same uh, same sex uh, same sex marriages. Back in the day, that was not acceptable at all. And um, there was a couple. As I was doing my research on DB, I wasn't able to put it up here. But um, it was a couple who two yeah it was two guys that ended up getting married. They went through a lot back in the day that wasn't approved at all. So when they seen that you were trying to interact or be in a relationship with the same gender, that was like a death right there, like marrying an interracial, um, marrying someone from a different race as those as they get, you know, a death, death penalty or just, you know, being locked up for that. That was the same for um, same-sex marriages, which made it worse, very, very hard for them to... Um, do and nowadays, as you can see, there's a whole lot of same sex marriages as well, which is good because, inter like I say, interracial marriages is becoming diverse, it's spreading. It's not something where back in the day where you had to go through a lot just to be able to, you know, marry someone from the um, from a different race or ethnicity or anything like that. So it's good to see that interracial marriage is on the rise, and um, yeah, and I'm all for interracial marriages. Um, I hope one day to be able to marry someone from a different city, a different race that is not of my own. So, um, but yeah, the, I found this topic really exciting. Um, as I did my research, it was very interesting to me because it's something that runs in my family. So being able to come from an interracial family, just a background of it, just kind of you know was exciting for me to be able to do the research. But um, and there's some sources.